Hello YouTubers, uh, thank you for your time. I hope that my video is helpful to you. Uh, I'm going to show you my collection of late 1800s German ammunition pouches. Now, be sure to read my description below uh, because I'm going to go and uh, go to go through the pouches real fast and then come back and go into a little uh, deeper detail. And if you want to skip ahead and come back to a different pouch, uh, reading the description will give you the times as to uh, which I'm identifying uh, each particular pouch. So let's run through them real fast and then we'll come back and we'll also talk about a couple of books where I get my information. So this here in front of you is the 1874 ammunition pouch. This is the back, that's the front. Then we have the 1887 ammunition pouches here. This is the front and that's the back. And right here we have the 1887 NCO pouch. Uh, next to that we have the 1888 pouch for the commission rifle. And uh, and over here we have the 1895 and next to it is uh, that's my Turkish ammunition pouches but uh, basically a decent representation of the 1909 ammunition pouches which we're not going to go through today but uh, let's go back and review the first one here um, after the Franco-Prussian War uh, the Germans still had the Dreise, uh, Dreise needle gun, uh, which was paper cartridges. But, of course, in 1871, they came out with the famous Mauser, 71 Mauser. And so now they were using metallic cartridges. And metallic cartridges are actually quite heavy. And, of course, they had to come out with a new style of uh, pouch for them. So they came out with this one. As you can see, let me back up a little bit here. So the features of this particular pouch are obviously the big giant belt loops. And this particular style here of uh, uh, top uh, accommodating the straps. You've got uh, finials here at the end, at the corner here, at the corners. Uh, studs. And you've got a big long piece that's connecting the top lid to the actual box. Now also, what you can see here, it's pretty darn um, 90 degree angle. And what um, um, you can see here, all right. Now, looking at the top here, you can see that it's actually pretty, it's actually quite straight in this manner. It's pretty straight. And, however, if you look at the bottom, you can see that it does have a little bit of a curve here. That's to form fit the soldier because the pouches would actually open up away from the soldier. And they would carry about 20 rounds in each one. Now, this edge here, let me show you. This is a reproduction. This is my repro here. And they do make them, but they're very difficult to get. Um, so the two pieces of leather in this particular model were covered up by this extra piece of leather that they put around here. And it's easier to, to see it in this repro than my original. But the whole thing is covered with an extra piece of leather. Uh, this is what the inside looks like. Individual loops for the ammunition. You see a piece of leather in here. And so that's the one they were using now in 1871 or 1874, I'm sorry, the 71 Mauser in 1874 is when they started using this one. Now what they did realize that now that you've got all that weight and this one loop 
this belt loop here, these things were actually flapping like boom, boom. They would bounce around way, way, way too much. And given all that weight on just your belt, they needed a new model. Unfortunately, it took them until 1887 to come up with the next one, which I'm going to put right here. Let me take this out of the way. They came up with this 1887 model. Now, if you remember, I made a note to tell you that the 80, 74 was quite um, 90 degree angle. This one has a bit of a curve and it no longer has that piece of leather covering the two connecting parts. Also, this piece connecting the top and bottom, or the box and the, and the lid, is a smaller piece now. It's not the entire length of the box. It also has ties downs on the side, but this time it's got belt loops with keepers and studs on the bottom or finials as they're sometimes called. Um, also, one huge innovation was of course, this particular buckle here, which assisted in carrying the load because those of you who know the backpack or the tornister, haversack, rucksack, whatever they called it, had an extra provision to where it would connect to your belt, but it would also connect to the ammunition pouch. That way, it would help with the shoulder straps carry the load of the ammunition, which of course is still pretty heavy. And as you can see, this one definitely has quite a bit more of a curve. I hope you can see that. It has a quite a bit of a more curve to it. And see here. Yeah, I think you can see it decently here. And let me see here. Let me pop this up. So the inside I've seen many of them like this. This material here is kind of a canvas with oil of some sorts. It's not paper. Sometimes these pouches have them when you buy them, sometimes they don't. But uh, it's, it's, it's got some sort of treatment on it. It's a little bit brittle, a little bit mint. It's also very old. So uh, it's not something you wanna really screw around with too much. Uh, but I don't take it out. I just took it out to show you. Also, what sometimes you'll find inside is a piece of wood. And you can see that it's shaped. And of course, that helps to separate the tips of the bullets. Not for anything dangerous, but simply because um, it just helps to keep everything aligned. Now, I will. Let me bring up the 74 again. Sometimes you will see, obviously, a mixture of these two styles of pouches. Because when they came out with the 87, they didn't just throw away the 74s. You will see plenty of 74s, which are, like I said, more at a 90 degree angle. And that leather piece here and this style here of lid but they'll have the belt loops and this buckle for the weight assist sometimes they'll have this cover now or this lid and sometimes they'll have this lid so if you see a mixture of these two that's the reason they didn't throw these away they just started basically converting them and hopefully you can see you can see the curve here i hope i'm not jumping around um, also, if you'll see, you will notice that this and this are sort of at an angle out. They're, they're pointed out. So that means that this part here is wider or longer than the bottom part. So um, that's what they did to accommodate uh, the new uh, ammunition pouches. Now, 
I will tell you that from here on end to the next, the other pouches that I'm going to show you, all of these are the same. They're flat on one side, round on, on the other side. Okay, give me just a second and I'll show you the next ammunition pouch. Let me get rid of all this stuff here. Okay, so the next pouch is going to be the also 1887 NCO pouch. Okay, also has a uh, weight assist buckle, belt loops with the belt keepers, studs on the bottom, and you can definitely see the kidney kidney bend in this one. To me, it looks like a kidney bean, but you could definitely see that. Now, this one's a lot smaller, quite a bit smaller, because it's obviously for the NCOs. Here it is again with a smaller leather piece. It's rounded here. It's rounded at the at the sides, and I took off. Let me take off the lid here. It's got uh, in the middle here is where the pieces are connected. It's got double double leather, and this is all one piece that loops around. And right here and right here is where the extra leather piece is. Very complicated for a little pouch. Now, I will tell you this. Sometimes you'll see the insides of these 87 uh, NCO pouches with uh, either, I think, some leather or um, metal inside. And I'm not 100% sure what that's all about. However, I will say that this was used in World War I by the engineers. So perhaps those additions inside was something uh, that they added for them but i am not sure if they use them as uh, ammunition pouches or as uh, something else for the engineers so anyway let's go to the next one now we get to the two super 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 duper rare very difficult to find this is the 1888 ammunition pouch for the commission rifle all right so this one would carry just six end block clips you have uh, ammunition assist thumb holes finger holes that way you can just basically do this and you're not trying to dig in there and you can see that now inside here this side inside and on this side it's made of metal um i'm not 100 percent sure why but you can see right there there's a on both sides there's a piece of metal sticking outward now i'm going to assume that's to add a little bit of pressure to the ammunition so that it doesn't wiggle around uh, unfortunately these things are incredibly expensive about 25 dollars each one and so um, I don't have all that many, but as you can see, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny curve to this one. Not all that much, okay? And same style, belt loop, buckle for weight assist, keeper for the belt loop, stud on the bottom, and stud on the side for the, the strap to hold down the... Uh, uh, the lid it's very squarish but i'm sure you can see the angle it comes down at an angle inward on both sides um i'm assuming it's just for the ammunition that's what they did that for but this one is incredibly incredibly difficult to find and very expensive very expensive how come it's 150 bucks yikes so again the one piece holding the top the lid and the box together and that's that now i'm going to put this to the side here because i have another one another super super very rare hard to find in decent condition or in even decent condition 
This is the 1895. Let's begin really quickly by stating, of course, the same old uh, weight buckle assist, uh, or the buckle weight assist, belt loops, belt keepers, studs on the bottom. Um, but here's where things start to get different. They added a lot of rivets in this one, a lot of rivets. Probably they figured with all that weight, uh, maybe they had a lot of problems, but this model 1895 has a lot of rivets all over. And you can see the top, it, it doesn't really have much of an angle or, or a curve, I'm sorry, for the body, because it's not that huge. It's not as long as the 71 or the 74. It's not as long, it's more boxy than the other ones. And more rivets, same piece of leather, but connecting the top, the lid, and the box itself. Now, here's one thing that's also very unique about the 95s. Instead of them going from the top to the bottom with the strap, they went from the bottom to the top. And this is the only one they did that for. I don't know why. Okay, very strange, but eh, unique. So, let's look at the inside because it's also different, okay? Now, these pieces here, move out of the way, these pieces here are actually leather, but they're so old and stiff, I can't even move them. This pouch carried nine, whereas the 88 carried only six. So obviously it's bigger and you see the the position of the stripper clip or the I'm sorry the end block clip let's remember how this one was loaded like this so the 88 and the 99 over here were uh, were holding the end block clips different okay and now let's do a little comparison with the 88 and the 95 because it was very difficult to find good, decent information on these. Um, there's plenty of YouTube, or no, I'm sorry, not YouTube, internet information where these two are actually mixed. So you can see the 95 and the 88. 95 is much bigger, fatter box than the 88. It carries nine. Again, it's fatter, wider, and... Uh, See the different stitching down here for different pieces, all the riveting on this one. Lots of rivets. But anyway, that is my collection of my ammunition pouches, late German, late 1800s for Germany. And I want to show you a couple of the books that I use for referencing. This is uh, one of those Verlag books. Um, this is volume one. It comes in a volume one and two, and I got these for $150. They're very expensive, but they really, really are worth their price because, uh, one of the, they're, it's got a lot of like 500 something pages. And what's really great is that they've got a lot of fantastic quality pictures. Plus their equipment is pretty much always museum pictures. And so this is the 74. Oh, that was a test. That was a test. Here is the 88, 80, 87, I'm sorry, 87 uh, NCOs. Here is the 87 regular. This pouch here, same one, was used as a reserve. Very, very limited use but they covered in this book, which is really nice. Here is the 88 at an angle, very distinct at an angle. And here is the 95s. And this is how it would attach to the shoulder straps. Very boxy. And this is the 88. So, and of course, these are the 1909s, the ones most people are, are uh, familiar with. Now, let me show you another book really quickly. This is another book by the same publisher. 
and this one at least covers uh, um, a lot of the colonial stuff which is my that's my real deep interest but as you can see the 87s um, I wanted to show you this one because look at the color on it it's very strange huh and I'll tell you what I've seen the 87s reproductions and they look like this color they're selling them in Europe um, I only stumbled on it one time, so good luck. And here's another book that I think is pretty cool. Um, however, it's an old style book. What do I mean by that? Black and white. This is all we had for a long time, black and white, until these colorized books started coming out. This one's about $70. It is in German, but they send you this pamphlet here that covers... Um, it has a lot of countries uh, from 1850 to 1950. So you go to the country in question, and the pictures here are numbered, the stuff that they say underneath. This is not translated in that pamphlet. Only all of these things seem like I said. You just go to the country that you're looking for, and you read this, and you match it with the country that you're looking here. And uh, there you go. So this is a really great informative book. Um, if you're looking for a whole bunch of different countries, um, references, and um, uh, that's, uh, it's only $70. And I see them a lot on uh, uh, eBay Germany. So a lot of the stuff here I tend to get from eBay, eBay France, which is eBay.fr. And uh, Actually, even if they're German, I'm finding more stuff in, in eBay France than I am in eBay Germany. Um, for Germany, Patronentaschen is the uh, cartridge pouches or ammunition pouches. For French, it's uh, Cartucciere or Giberney. And that's what I look up. Um, and I find a lot of stuff in France. Fantastic stuff. Even more so than eBay here, USA. So um, I hope you enjoyed my video I hope that uh, if you have any questions uh, please send me a message I'll answer whatever I can um, thank you very much for watching uh, see you next time